This is the beginning of Unit 9, Week 13, Lecture 27, and this lecture is going to be broken down, down into two parts. Um, we're still talking about diet and nutrition, and today we're going to talk about vitamins and minerals. So I'm going to break it down into two parts, and the first part we'll talk about vitamins, and the second part we'll talk about minerals. Okay, so um, the first thing I want to look at is this... Um, my Pyramid, Steps to a Healthier You Pyramid again. And when you look at this, um, you know, USDA's advice on how to eat, remember the, the orange is for grains, the green is veggies. The sizes mean about how much of each of these you should eat. Fruits, fruits. Um, the yellow is oils, sweets. The blue is dairy, and the purple is a protein sources such as meat and beans. But um, you don't see anywhere on here um, vitamins and minerals. And the reason why is because if you follow these guidelines on this pyramid um, and eat the proper ratios of each of these different types of foods, a variety every day, you should naturally get all the vitamins and minerals you need to stay healthy. Okay, So that's why they don't put it on there. Normally the only time people have to pay attention to vitamins and minerals is if they are unhealthy or malnourished. Okay, But let's talk some about what, what, what we mean when we talk about vitamins. First of all, um, vitamins chemically are organic molecules and they have a wide range of physiological functions. And you only need small amounts of vitamins in your diet, um, but they are essential for good health, proper metabolic functioning, and disease prevention. So it's not like the macronutrients, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, where you need um, grams and grams of them every day. In this case, a vitamins is often on the order of milligrams or even micrograms per day. Okay, and you've probably heard of people referring to two types of vitamins, fat soluble versus water soluble. Again, those are chemical, from the chemical um, concept of vitamins, and the fat soluble are um, the types of vitamins that are soluble in fat, so they would be considered to be nonpolar or hydrophobic, whereas the water soluble um, are hydrophilic or polar. Okay, they like water. Um, and so the, the fat-soluble vitamins then are found in foods that contain fat because they are also dissolved in the fats that you eat. For example, in vegetable oils and um, even the oils of leafy green vegetables, um, you'll find, for example, vitamin E because um, even vegetables have fats and varying fat contents. I mean, think of an avocado. It's a lot of fat. Um, and so they're, they're found in, in fatty foods, and they're stored in the fat of your body. Whereas the um, water-soluble vi vitamins are found in um, the more hydrophilic parts of foods around carbohydrates and proteins, and um, are found in all types of foods, uh, fruits, vegetables, and meats, and um, they're polar. <clears throat> and so one of the uh, most important things about this, if you think chemically, the difference between fat-soluble and water-soluble, since we have fat deposits in our body, we don't need to eat fat-soluble vitamins daily. Okay, so you do not necessarily need to consume fat-soluble vitamins daily. But the water-soluble vitamins, you do need to um, consume daily because they are flushed out of your body. Um, and since they're found in calorie-rich foods and they're not stored in the body, normally you eat calorie-rich foods every day, and so you're going to get the amount of vitamins that you need to metabolize those foods every day. Um, and you'll notice, for example, if you take a multivitamin, um, your urine changes colors a couple hours after you take the multivitamin because most of what you have just taken is being flushed out of your body. You really don't need that many vitamins every day, unless your doctor has prescribed them because you have some sort of a <clears throat> deficiency of some sort or another. But it's, it's most people don't. Okay, so now that you know the difference between a fat-soluble and a water-soluble vitamin, 
Um, now I want you to take a look at this particular molecule here. This is the structure of folic acid and it is a vitamin that helps prevent certain types of anemia and aids in nucleic acid synthesis. It's particularly important for pregnant women and um, to prevent birth defects and um, it's the question here is it lipid soluble or is it water soluble and if you look at it the difference between lipid soluble and water soluble is is it going to be a hydrophobic or a nonpolar type of molecule or a polar and what we do we look for is we look for electronegative elements um, especially bound to hydrogen such as OH all these OH's and these C double bond O's and NH all of these um, functional groups um, spread out all over the entire molecule tell us that this particular molecule because there's all these places for water to um, you know to have a strong attraction to water at all these places wherever you have these um, electronegative elements um, so yes this is a water soluble so just by looking at this structure for this molecule, I can say by looking at the chemical structure that it is indeed water soluble, which tells you that you need a daily supply of it. Okay? And if you're eating a nice variety of foods, you should get um, all the folic acid you need, unless if you're pregnant, in which case you need, you need to make sure you get plenty of it. And so normally a doctor will prescribe a folic acid supplement for pregnant women. Otherwise, if you have a super healthy diet, you should be fine. Um, with your folic acid intake. And that's something else I should uh, mention now. In the case of the, the um, water-soluble vitamins you need daily, and the fat-soluble vitamins, since they dissolve in the fat, actually the problem with the fat-soluble vitamins is getting too much. Okay, you have to be careful not to get too much. Some people take um, vitamin E a lot because they heard that it's an antioxidant and it's good for you. But if you take too much, it starts building up in your body and it can make you sick. So you have to be very careful not to overdo it with the um, fat-soluble vitamins. The water-soluble, of course, your, your body's going to eliminate them. So you're just wasting your money if you take too much of that. But the fat-soluble, it can build up and become toxic.